Okay, so there is kind of an age old question, a little bit like the chicken and the egg as it relates to career development, specifically for software engineers, though I think this could apply to any field. And that question is, do you want to be the most senior person on a team or do you not want to be the most senior person on a team? And I want to give my take on that based on my own experience and some interesting things that I've found around the interwebs. Okay, so in order to explain my take, I need to do a little bit of a detour into tennis. Now, I love tennis. I grew up playing tennis and a few weeks ago I found a video from a guy that you've probably never heard of called Eric Buderak. Now Eric was a great professional player. He was up to number 17 in the world in doubles which doesn't get as much attention as singles but still a world-class caliber player made the finals of the Australian Open and I came across a video of him talking about why he chose to play division three college tennis instead of division one college tennis. Now for those of you not familiar with the American system division one is the highest level so that's all the school you've probably heard of if you've watched any sports like Alabama for football or maybe Duke for basketball. That's division one. Division three are typically small liberal arts colleges in the Northeast or maybe in the Midwest. And so Eric Buderak, he started out playing division one, but he said in this video that he was super distracted and not getting better because he was really consumed with his lineup spot. So a quote from him in this video is, he said, I felt like I had to defend my spot every week in practice and that that actually hurt my ability to get good training in. So this is super, super counterintuitive for I think anybody that plays sports because the conventional wisdom says that you need to be around better players in order to get better. But here Eric is saying that being around better players and having to compete just to get into the lineup was actually distracting him from getting good practice in. So I think there's really something there and I think there's something there that we can apply to our own lives and our own careers, specifically software development, but if you happen to not be an engineer, I think it could apply to you as well. So the main takeaway from Eric Buderak's story for me is that humans are extremely, extremely sensitive to status and we tend to play a lot of status games. So we call it other things than status games. We call it prestige or acclaim or that people like us. But at the end of the day, all that is, is just kind of uh, our own internal ranking system, right? And so in the case of the tennis team, you have an actual ranking system system, which is the weekly lineup. And Buderak was distracted by that. This has been documented in other places. My favorite place this has been documented is in a book by Malcolm Gladwell called David and Goliath. And the whole book is about how things that we consider weaknesses are actually strengths. One of those things that Malcolm Gladwell talks about is going to a less prestigious college. And without going into everything, basically at the end of the day, Gladwell found that quote unquote smartest kids at any given college based on SAT scores are the ones that tend to drop out of STEM majors the least. So it doesn't matter whether you're at Brown or the University of Maryland, if you're in the top 25% of SAT scores there, then you're the most likely to complete a STEM major. So the takeaway there is that we tend to compare ourselves and try and figure out what our standing is based on the other people around us. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're at Harvard or whether you're at a state college. So what is the takeaway? I know that that was quite a long roundabout to get to something of any substance as it relates to career, but I think the takeaway is this, that we want to avoid status games. And one way of doing that is to be the most senior person in an organization. Now, I wouldn't advocate this for everybody. I wouldn't advocate this for software engineers at the beginning of their careers. I think at the beginning of your career, it's really, really important to continue to learn as much as possible, to learn from other people around you. And in fact, that's one criticism that people might have about this is, I wanna learn from people around me. I don't wanna be the most senior person because then I'm teaching everybody and I'm not learning myself. I think that might be a little bit of a false dichotomy because at the end of the day, when you are the most senior person, you get exposed to the most complicated problems. And and the most complicated problems help you to learn and grow and push past your old boundaries. So if you think about Eric Buderak playing D3 tennis, he was the number one player at his D3 college. He won the NCAA singles title. And along the way, he was playing the best player from every single other college, rather than maybe being number six or so on his own team. And you know, there's a few people better than him, but in his case, he was getting to play the best players on all the other teams every single week. And I think there's something to be said for that. And the equivalent would be solving the hardest problems at your company. So my advice would be, 
to people just starting out in software engineering to take those first two or three years and learn as much as you possibly can, get a great foundation, learn from the people around you, and then start to seek out more senior roles. Start to be the go-to person, start to be the person that is solving the hardest problems in the company because ultimately that is gonna be where you grow the most. You want to be the person that has the pressure, that has the expectation. To quote another great tennis player, Billie Jean King used to say that pressure is a privilege. And so I think that definitely applies in this case. When you're the most senior person in an organization, you get to tackle the hardest problems and that is a privilege. At the end of the day, I think that's gonna do the most for your career. So thanks so much for watching to the end. I know this might be a little bit of a controversial topic as I've socialized this on my newsletter and elsewhere. I've gotten some pushback. So I'm curious, does this line up with your experience? Does this make sense? If you're still watching, please feel free to leave a comment, leave a like. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel. So consider subscribing. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.